What's up, YouTube? It's the Action Figure Grader coming back to you with a vintage Kenner market update. And it's not just Kenner. We've got some nice foreign stuff like Takara and Lily Letty that I'm going to show you. There were some pretty incredible items that sold very rare at auction. So it's it's kind of a one-of-a-kind one kind, kind of weekend where you just don't see this stuff pop up ever. I mean, I, I, I can't remember I've ever seen these kind of very rare items ever come up for sale at auction. So it's been a lot of fun to track these prices. Awfully tempting to bid, but I did not. And uh, we're going to go through those. But one quick channel note, I want to say thank you to Eric Kelly. He is my latest Patreon supporter. So I want to say thank you so much, Eric. Thank you again to all my Patreon supporters. You guys allow me to make more and better videos. And I just really appreciate the channel support. But let's go ahead and dig right in as usual. I'm going to start with loose graded figures, mostly first 21 figures, the first 21 figures. There were a lot that, that sold across maybe three or four different sellers that were all really nice high grade examples. And then we're gonna dig into the mint on card items, starting with very early card backs all the way to, to some later issues and some foreign stuff. So uh, first of all, we've got an AFA 85 R2D2, really nice example. What's interesting is, is that there were two that sold. And if you look at this one versus, now this one sold for $365 on free shipping 21 bids so that's that one and then this one also sold all, very labeled exactly the same they're both hong kongs this one sold for 434 dollars plus 15 dollars shipping so let's call it 450. so we're talking a pretty big difference of 365 versus 434. now here's my personal opinion on this my personal opinion on this is that uh this one actually looks better to me than than the first one or than the second one that sold but I think a lot of it is, is just due to photography. You know, the, sometimes, some sellers, they can really make their items pop with really good photos. This one looks really clean. Uh, the, the blue on the dome, you know, the blue paint around his eye and all that kind of stuff is, is very nice. The sticker looks to be in pretty good shape. Maybe some very slight yellowing, but, uh, but very minimal. Uh, but, you know, really, really nice shape overall. Now, the other one. I would argue it's not nearly as nice looking. You know, if you look at the label, I mean, look at the the, the sticker for R2-D2. It's got lots of bleed, lots of run on the colors there. Uh, you know, again, it's graded the same grade, uh, but I would argue that the, the, this one is, is you know, appears to be in much better condition to me. Uh, the blue is a lot darker and deeper. This, it might just be the flash, admittedly, but, but more importantly, it's the sticker. The sticker on this one is not nearly as nice. And... Uh, so I, I was, you know, you can, even on the back there in that lower right hand corner, you can see it's got some some you know various blemishes and things, but they are both graded exactly the same. Yet this one sold for about ninety dollars more. So you know, after after you factor in shipping, so it's just something to keep in mind is that there are deals out there. You just got to keep keep an eye out and be patient. But you know th these both sold. Let's see, this one sold December fifth at seven p.m. This one sold the night before at nine twenty p.m. So just a day later, you got one for about you know, let's call it 25% less uh, than what this one sold for. So anyway, just interesting data points there. This same seller though, SW Seller had some really beautiful examples though. He had this uh, Stormtrooper AFA 85. The Stormtrooper is one loose graded that continues to jump up. And I think a lot of it is just because even nice examples that uh, are not protected from UV and from plastic degradation, they're all starting to yellow. I've, I've talked to a lot of collectors that said, Man, I, I hadn't really noticed my stormtroopers in a while, and I've had them sitting up on a shelf, and they're yellowing now. They're a lot more yellow than than the last time I looked at them, in, you know, in close detail. So these examples that that still have pretty good white, you know, even this one's got a little bit of maybe slight yellowing on that right arm of his, uh, but very minimal. But anyway, that one sold for four hundred and fifty dollars. It was graded AFA eighty five. That's a big number. That's a big number to me. Um, uh, this same seller also had a beautiful. Princess Leia, first 12, Princess Leia. Brown is labeled brown hair and belt. And uh, just a gorgeous, gorgeous figure there. Uh, AFA 85, that one sold for $600. So for a while there, it was about $450, you know, for an AFA 85 Leia. Then it was $500, then it was $550. Now it seems like the going rate is anywhere from $550 to $600. But this one had a beautiful archival case, brand new case. And, uh, you know, it was a Hong Kong with the brown hair. The brown, it seems like the brown hair and belt tends to go for a little bit more. It's it's kind of a slight variation uh, for those Hong Kong figures. So 
I still can't tell them apart. It's hard for me to tell them apart. Um, all right, here's another one that this same seller had, AFA-85 Death Squad Commander. I think this one was the, yeah, the dark blue emblem. So you got the light and dark blue emblem. You can see that blue uh, kind of insignia bar on his chest there. It comes in either a dark blue like this one or a lighter blue. This one was graded AFA-85 also. That one sold for $227.50 plus shipping. That seems to be about going right for an AFA-85 Death Squad Commander. It's always in that kind of 225 to 250 range lately. Um, this is another one. This, I mean, again, this seller had some pretty incredible items. He had this one. This is the AFA 75 plus vinyl cape Jawa. And, uh, that one sold for 2484. So a, a, a really big number for a 75 grade. It did come with the CIB. Uh, but wow, that's a, that's a big number for a 75 plus. I mean, that, that used to be the price for like an AFA 85 or, you know, or, or less, you know, it used to be like, I, I think I paid 1900 for my, AFA 85 in an older style case, but that was several years ago. I mean, that was probably four or five years ago at least. But uh, anyway, 2484 is what what the price is now for a, a 75 plus. Uh, this is one that my buddy David S picked up, and what a beautiful example of a double telescoping Luke Farm Boy. So this one has the saber with the uh, telescoping tip. This you know uh, was encased with the tip with the 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 extended tip kind of still inside the saber, but it does extend out as you can see with how that that case is is uh, it shows how long that that filament could, that inner filament can get to. Uh, that one's graded a AFA eighty five, so a very very high grade example. And wow, what a what a really nice beauty there. And that was at auction too. I mean, you very rarely see such high grade figures at auction. That one sold for three thousand and fifty dollars. So congratulations to David on that one. Just a a really mint example there and it came again with the CIB so you know these really high-end loose graded figures often like the double telescoping figures both or all three the, the Luke the Ben and the Vader all come with these CIBs usually and um, same thing for the for the vinyl cape Jawa that, that's mine mine came with one of those as well or like prototypes you know first shot prototypes things like that they usually come with these kind of things uh, you know the, usually whoever submits them pays the extra X amount of dollars for for one of those CIBs, and it might be required, I think. You know, it, the a a AFA charges for loose grading based on the value of the figure, and over a certain value, I think it qualifies under, like, this archival tier that's a lot more expensive. I don't know if that statement, you know, the CIB Certificate of Auth Authenticity is included at that upper tier or if you got to pay a little bit extra or not, but, you know, if you got an item like that, it makes a lot of sense to go ahead and get to get one of those um, CIB or, you know, COAs from, from CIB. So, um, all right. So a few others that this seller had. This one was an AFA 85 Snaggletooth Hong Kong version. So just a standard Hong Kong. But, man, that's that's a really nice one. You usually see a lot of wear on his toes, on his toenails there. That's what my wife said about my toes. But the, the, the toes usually have a, quite a bit of wear. And this one had a little bit of wear, but not much. A little bit of wear on the hand there. But that belt looks to be in pretty good shape. And these photos are really super high definition so every little minor flaw shows up like on his hand there but uh, uh i'm sure it looks even better in person than you know this these photos are to the seller's credit i mean they really show every single little detail on the uh, on the figures but anyway that one sold for 225 plus 15 dollars shipping so pretty nice example there that's a little higher than usual you know i've seen i've seen fa 85s even with a new case for snaggle tooth the red snaggle tooth you know, be closer to kind of 175 ish at auction. So that was a little bit higher than I expected. Uh, here was another one I really would like to get. This one was the Hong Kong AFA 85 Luke Sky. I've got one little spot next to right here, as you can see. I've got mostly Polish bootlegs for my Luke Skywalkers, and I've got one Spanish pot. But I've got one little spot right here, right here. And I wanted to get another loose graded, <laughs> a loose graded AFA 85. Um, Luke X-Wing to put right in that spot right there. So one of these days I'll get one to, to add one there. But uh, anyway, that one sold for $257 plus $15 shipping. So that's a really nice example. They're really pretty and uh, love that figure. And again, I mean, again, this seller had just some gorgeous high-grade example uh, early figures. But uh, this one was an AFA 80 blue snaggletooth. No dent in the boot like mine. It's got the archival case. AFA 80, really nice. Really nice. Uh, you know, these, these these figures really do get harsh, harshly graded by both AFA and CAS. 
Um, I'm sure UKG is the same way. This one had a little bit of spot of wear on his hand and just a little bit of discoloration on the torso there, as you can see. That's probably what brought the what brought the score down more than anything else on this figure. Um, it's just so common that that torso gets discolored, and and this one's no exception. It's just got very slight yellowing going on in that torso, and I don't know what causes it. It just must be a different kind of plastic than um, than the plastic used for the arms, but. Uh, Whatever, it's just a, a beautiful example. So uh, that one sold for seven hundred and seven dollars. I thought that price was pretty fair, really, for for an AFA eighty no dent. The no dent in general commands a slight premium versus the one with the toe dent, but um, I thought that was a pretty good price for that for that item. Here's one that the Muffin Man. I didn't cover a lot of the Muffin Man's figures this week. He's got some amazing figures uh, at auction this week for those of you who are looking. Just some incredible. Lily Lettys and things like that. So if you are looking for any high-grade foreign loose figures, make sure to check out his listings for, that are ending this week. Just beautiful stuff. But this is one that he had. This was a UKG-85 Hong Kong Death Star droid. I picked up an AFA-85 this weekend, but this one actually sold for more, uh, $231. I paid two, uh, $218, I believe, from the same seller that had all those other early 21s. Um, but anyway, this one sold for 231 and obviously for me, it, it doesn't make sense because of the I mean, look at the shipping now. The shipping has gotten so ridiculous with the global shipping program. $92 for me to buy this overseas and have it shipped. It's $92 now. That's, I mean, that's how ridiculous the global shipping program is. And it's only if you use the global shipping program, which I don't, I'm not blaming the seller here because the seller, all he's got to do is ship it to the global shipping program and, and his hands are washed. It's not his problem anymore. But the buyer has got to pay a lot to, to, because of the GSP. And luckily, some sellers in the UK don't use the global shipping program, and the prices are reasonable, like 25 bucks, whatever the number is. But $92? I mean, come on, eBay. That's just ridiculous. Give me a break. Um, okay, we, now, Collectible Investment Brokerage. Now, they're the same company that provides the CIBs for, like, these Lukes. So CIB, uh, Collectibles Investments Brokerage, they provide the COA, the Certificate of Authenticity. I'm getting my... My acronym is mixed up here, but anyway, CIB is basically an affiliate of AFA, right? They're affiliated with them, and they do a lot of high-end stuff. And uh, this is, they had just some incredible, incredible items uh, that at auction this weekend. One of them was this one, the vintage 7-inch Takara Chewbacca. Uh, that one was an AFA 60 because it did have some, some blister damage down here by his feet, as you can see, some crushing going on there. But these are very, very unique uh, you had the Stormtrooper, Chewbacca, C-3PO, and, and Darth Vader in the line. And it looks like uh, also uh, an R2-D2 of some sort. They had like some rocket firing figures, rocket firing R2 and C-3PO's. They had some model uh, X-Wings. You know, just a lot of weird stuff that, that Takara put out over in Japan. And uh, it's, it's an incredible item with some Japanese writing. I mean, look at all the Japanese writing there. But uh, a very unique figure. Very wide, kind of interesting design. Very foreign feel to it. Kind of has like a, you know, King Kong look to them, which is what I'm sure is what they're going for to, to appeal to the Japanese market. Um, but it's a very expensive figure, just loose. And this one sold for eleven thirty-two, one thousand $1,132 plus shipping. But uh, it actually stayed fairly low up until the very end of the auction. It was like around... $600 and then it jumped it, it almost doubled in the last you know two minutes so uh, very unique very beautiful item though um, this one was the big one though this one was another uh, Takara item now this one is unique because it has the white background on the card back and it also has the alternate sculpt for Darth Vader's face and you can see the uh, the Takara sticker there on the front so th there's some with with the regular Hong Kong Vaders with with a, a regular kind of background i don't know what color it is normally probably that orange color like darth vader's name pill um with the, the regular sculpt the regular hong kong sculpt but this takara specific factory sculpt is very very expensive even loose graded i've seen them go for a thousand dollars plus fifteen hundred dollars plus so this one was afa 75 and you can see how it's labeled there white background takara sticker alternate head they had to fit a lot in there because of you know, AFA insists on using these antiquated labels where they can't fit a lot of stuff in there versus, you know, UKG and CAS where they can fit a lot more information in there. So I think AFA needs to update their labels personally. 
But anyway, it was graded AFA 75, 12 back C. But th these alternate card backs are, are very, very rare. I've, I have seen a couple of them for sale on Facebook before. Uh, even ungraded or you know high high grade, you're going to be three thirty five to forty five hundred dollars for this Vader. It's just a very uh, low population type of item, but absolutely amazing. Four thousand one hundred and fifty dollars took that home in in the uh, in the auction. Now that same seller who had a lot of the high grade loose stuff, he also had this one, which was a U eighty plus Meccano Jawa. It, it did have a yellow blister, but, uh, you know, this is very similar to mine in that someone sent in a sealed case of these 20-back Meccanos, uh, French-made Meccano Jawas. And they're all like on a square, you know, I call them a right, I call them square, but a lot of uh, high-end collectors corrected me, rightly so, that this is more of like a rectangle card back. But I, I just call it a square card back just from an ease of... of an ease of, of, of speaking, but uh, but technically this the, it's not a square. It is a rectangle. It's slightly longer on the sides than the than the top and bottom. But anyway, it is a U80 plus. So again, somebody sent in a sealed case of these, and there were a lot of these overstock. I mean, people have found boxes and boxes of these Meccano square card square card rectangle card uh, Jawa 20 backs. And so again, someone sent sent these in. It, it is a yellow blister, so that kept the price down a little bit. But that one sold for seven hundred and sixty dollars. I paid more for mine, to be honest with you. I paid. I have a U eighty. This is a U eighty plus. But mine is a clear blister. So, uh, but I did pay more than what this one sold for. I think I paid. I don't remember, but I, I want to say around nine hundred is what I paid for mine. So seven sixty. I feel like giving the yellow to the blister, but it's also slightly higher grade. I, I think that's a pretty good deal. That's a pretty good deal for that item. Um, here was another one that I thought was interesting. This is a thirty two back B Luke AFA eighty. And uh, the card was 75, blister 80, figure 80. And so that's the Luke, you know, looking. And uh, you can see there, he suffers from the same problem that a, a lot of Luke Bespins do and that his torso has discolored. So just like the blue snags that we talked about earlier, these figures, even mint on card, can start to discolor. And you'll see that a lot with Luke's. You'll see it with Luke Farm Boys. You'll see it with Stormtroopers and Princess Leia, Hoth Stormtroopers. It's just uh, it's just something that's going to happen with these forty year old figures. But uh, anyway, it's just uh, pretty interesting. I, I think that if this this is a, an older grade, is my guess. Um, you know, it's got the clear view case up top, but uh, you know, the, the weapon, the pistol has come loose, so that automatically reduces the figure score to an eighty. But I think if this was regraded right now, uh, it would probably get a seventy five figure score instead of an eighty. But I might be wrong. I don't know. But anyway, uh, that one sold for eight hundred and ninety-five dollars. I thought that was a great price. Great price. Whoever picked that up, um, it's just very difficult to find these in high grade. Still clear blister. I would have paid that all day long. That's that's a in, in the current environment with what prices have done and how ridiculous prices are. That's a that's a great price. Uh, here was another good one I really liked, and I, I was shocked to see it sell as high as it did. But this one was an Empire Strikes Back Lando Calrissian forty-one back A AFA eighty. And it was listed at 1050, and I saw that it sold. I was like, "Who's paying 1050 for that?" Well, I did look it up on 130point.com, which is the website you can go to check out best offer accepted, and it actually sold for 875. So that's a pretty big discount over what that was listed at, almost 200 dollar discount, 175 dollar discount versus that. But for a 41 back A, clear blister, 80, 85, 85 subscores, that's a pretty good price in my opinion. Um, you know, the, the, not the list price, but the final sales price of eight seventy five. dollars free shipping. I mean, that's, that's a, that's a price that I'd be willing to pay too for, for, for such a nice item. Um, Chris W disagrees with me. He thinks it should be less than that, but I mean, just, this is what the market is right now. Unfortunately, until I see differently, you know, if you're high grade, clear blister, lots, lots of high grades on the sub score on a desirable unpunched item, you know, this is probably not too far off. 875 is probably not too far off in the current environment. Um, uh, SW Seller also had a few other mint on cards. Now, this, these were both. He had two uh, made in Mexico's that I wanted to talk about. This one was an AFA 75 plus squid head. Uh, that one, uh, really nice. It was 75 plus, 75, 85, 85 were the sub scores. Um, but that one sold for 209.50. That was a steal, in my opinion, for a beautiful squid head. Uh, and this one came in a little bit higher than I expected, but I shouldn't be that surprised. I think the reason that this this is another Made in Mexico Gamorrean Guard, it sold for $377 plus shipping. 
And I was like, wow, that seems high. But it's really not, if you think about it, because it's a fairly high grade. It was 75. It did have a 70 score for the blister and an 80 score. But it's 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 clear blister. You know, the, these these made in Mexico uh, figures, they they used a different type of blister. So they stayed yellow or they stayed uh, clear and, and did not get yellowed like the U.S. market version. And let me know if you've ever seen a U.S. market uh, Gamorrean Guard, Return of the Jedi, 99% uh, of them are yellowed now. So I think someone was willing to pay up and say, yeah, okay, it's only a 75, and it did have a 70 subscore, but it's a foreign-made it's a foreign made card back, and it's a clear blister. So, you know, when I started really thinking about what you're getting with this item and how hard it is to find a clear blister Gamorrean Guard in general, that uh, people are willing to pay a little bit of a premium, in my opinion, so... Uh, and it shows really well. I mean, it shows a lot better than a 75, in my opinion. So I think that was a nice pickup. Now we got the real big boys, and I was drooling over these, and I was I was talking to Boss Bounty about these. I was very seriously considering bidding on one, but I did not. I just decided to be cheap. It's Christmas time. I'd rather spend the spend money on my family than on me. Uh, I've gotten plenty this year, <clears throat> but here was a. True Lily Letty Market, El Regreso del Jedi, Las Galaxias, La Guerra de las Galaxias, Emperor's Roll Guard, and it also did have the blister support. And I think that was my big attraction to these. There was four of them that he had listed, and that was my attraction as to why I'd probably want to bid on them, because they already had the blister support. And uh, I just would worry about spending this kind of money on a foreign Lily Letty like this, unless it had the blister support. It would have to have it, I think, for me to, to be serious about it. Um, but anyway, this was an AFA 60. And this was the 30 back. This is the 30 back positive card back. And we're going we're gonna to show you a negative card back here in a second that was also in, in this auction lot by CIB. But what a gorgeous item. That one actually sold a little bit lower than I expected. I think it's because it was a regresso and it was, you know, somewhat lower grade. But that one sold for 2200 plus shipping. I mean, anything Lily Letty, like true Lily Letty market is going to be expensive. But these card backs are just so unique. I love the kind of artistic style on the back and just kind of the more rudimentary card backs. It just looks gorgeous. I've got a number of these loose graded with the card backs, but this is the one I was really seriously considering bidding on. And I had a snipe set up that was quite a bit higher than this for the 30 back Leia, but I just, I mean, it's, it's the holidays, man. I can't be spending, I can't be spending two grand on a, on a, on a figure when my, when my family is, you know, I want to, I want to give them a nice Christmas. You know what I mean? So, uh, this one was a beautiful example of Bausch though. And, uh, one I love to get, this is just gorgeous. And, uh, it was a pretty, pretty decent grades, 70, 75, 85. And again, it had the blister support and it's, it hovered for around, a, you know, between 11 and 1500 for most of the auction. And then at the end, it jumped to 2079. Uh, was the final sales price plus $25 shipping, so about $2,100. I was thinking it was going to sell closer to $2,500. That was kind of my snipe. But I decided earlier in the day that, you know, I kind of like had a come to Jesus moment. I was like, you don't need to be buying this right now. <laughs> so I, I took my snipe off, and I'm, I'm kind of glad I did because it's just an unnecessary type of thing. It's just too, too much. So uh, really pretty item, though. Now, this is one that had a really interesting story, and I'll show you the – the bid history in a second, but this one was an El Regreso del Jedi uh, Lando, and this one had the negative card back, and it was also an earlier card back. It was only a 14 back Regresso, so uh, it had you know this is an earlier card back, um, and uh, th these these negative card backs in general are a lot more desirable, and uh, this one was much earlier than the 30 backs that I just showed you, so. But anyway, they, well, the interesting thing was the bidding because it, it hovered basically for around six hundred dollars for the longest time, and so this was my fallback option. I was like, well, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be too bad to have one of these. So you know, it's, I know it's lower grade. It was an AFA fifty, but it did have the blister support, so it was it was interesting to me. And I was like, well, maybe it'll stay around a thousand, and that would be a little bit more of a budget you know budget friendly purchase for me. And I know it's I know that's expensive, folks, but I'm just saying that relative to the Bausch, you know, it would be like half price. Well, it ended up selling for more than the Bausch, and uh, I was I wanted to check out the bid history because look, look at that look, look at the bid history here. It went from seven, you know, it, was, it hovered around six hundred forever, and then it went to six thirty, seven seventy seven, nine hundred, a thousand, and then it went from a thousand to twenty four hundred. <laughs> so it just completely skyrocketed there at the end, and um, I was really surprised that that it jumped that much. But I think it's because it's an earlier card back. You know, it's only a fourteen back. 
and it's because it's a negative card back. These negative card backs are pretty desirable. So I've only got one of those for the uh, Biker Scout. And speaking of the Biker Scout, this one was the positive Biker Scout. I've got the, I've got this exact same card back, loose graded with my Biker, but I've got the negative card back. So the black card back like you just saw with the Lily Letty Lando Skiff. <clears throat> but anyway, this one was a mint on card, though. Mine's loose graded. This one was a mint on card Biker Scout. Graded 70, 70, 80, 80. So nice high grade for that blister, which is the hardest part to, you know, the, the blister scores on these Lily Lettys are usually what, what holds it back. And in this case, it wasn't. It was the card back that held it back because you had two 80 subscores. And I think that's what drove, you know, number one, there's a lot of Biker Scout focus collectors out there. But also because it had two really good subscores, the 80 and the 80, and the 80 for the blister especially, that really drove a lot of people on this one. And that one sold for $3,551. Uh, really high price there. I was not expecting it to go that high. I was thinking maybe it might hit 3000 That was kind of my number because of that subscores there. And, you know, it presents a lot better than an, an AFA 70 because of those subscores. But, wow, it, it just shot through the roof. And uh, a, a gorgeous, gorgeous letty. So, you know, as you can see, folks, this one, this weekend was was an epic weekend for uh, auctions for vintage Kenner stuff. Stuff that I, I don't know. I mean, don't hold me to this, but I can't imagine we're going to see four mint on card graded Lily Lettys sell at auction in the same weekend ever again. I mean, I just I don't think we'll ever see it unless you're at like Hakes or Vectus or one of those big auction houses. But to see it on eBay uh, was a pretty incredible sight. Not to mention like the the two beautiful Takara items. All the gorgeous loose graded uh, first 21 figures. So it was a truly remarkable weekend. And there was a lot more that I actually sold that I could have added to this video. But as you can see, it's already at 26 minutes. And uh, I hope that you enjoyed taking a look at some of these beautiful items. I'm really glad I didn't buy anything because I just feel a lot better. My pocketbook is full so I can spin, spin uh, and spoil my kids a little bit for the holiday. But uh, I hope you all enjoyed it and I hope you have a great week.